This is Graham from .easy. Today we're coming to you with a video to show you how to set up your email within a program like Outlook. We're going to be specifically using the Outlook version of 2013, one of the newer ones. Although if you have a previous version of Outlook or even any other email program, the settings we're going to be using and showing you where to find them are identical. So there's no problem there. For those of you using different versions of Outlook, you may see some of the settings in the different locations. Although 2010 Outlook onwards to 2013, most of the settings are in the exact same place. So you shouldn't have any problem finding them. And it, again, it's pretty much email set up for any different types of accounts is pretty similar. So you should be okay. If you do have any problems with it or you're looking to set up a different program, just contact our support and we'll help walk you through it. But for part of this video, we're gonna be just doing Outlook 2013 itself. So the first thing we need to do is we need to sign into our account. So we're going to be going into a master account in this case where we've got it set up. You can go into either a master account if you've set one up already. Otherwise, you can just go into your actual email account as well. If there's no problem. So we're just going to go into member zone here. Under member zone, you want to make sure to select the account you're using if you're on a master account. In this case, sample domain.net is the one we're selecting. Once we've done that, we need to go into the Access Site Admin panel, the C panel, and this will bring up our control panel here. If your control panel screen looks a little different than this one, that's okay. Some of them do have different themes depending on what servers or plans are on. So if it does look a little different, again, it's okay. All the headings are the same though. So we want to go to where it says email, and then we want to go to where it says accounts underneath. So for this here, you'll see we've already got a bunch of email accounts set up. If you haven't set one up yet, you can do so from the above section here. And once your account is set up, it'll show in the bottom section here as well. So we're going to be going to our info account, which is the one we're setting up. And we're going all the way to the right of it. And we're clicking on where it says more. Here, we're going to go to the option that says configure email client. So here you'll see the different options here, the secure settings and the non-secure settings. You can use either or when trying to connect. The difference between the two is the secure, the SSL, not all networks support it and some actual businesses or restricted areas may actually not allow you use of it because they'll reserve it for their own internal use. So if you're not sure whether or not it supports it, you can either try and check with your internet provider or to check with your IT person, whoever's in charge of the network. You can also just set it up and try it for instance and if it doesn't work, switch the settings across as well as there's no harm really in the trial and error of just one time connection. So we're going to leave the screen up here. It's a little easier because that way we can just copy and paste information or quickly reference it. Next thing we want to do is we want to actually open the email programs. In this case, we're going to be opening up Outlook. And we're just going to wait for it to set up here and open up. Now, if you've set up Outlook before, if you haven't set up Outlook, you're going to get different screens right away. If you've set up Outlook before, it's going to go ahead and start setting up everything and actually bring in your other accounts, in which case you're going to need to go into file at the top, then you're going to need to go into info and then account settings. If you're using an older version of it, you'll have to go under the tools menu instead. And you'll find either email settings or account settings under there. Since this is a brand new installation of Outlook we're showing you, it's coming up with the welcome message dead. So we're just going to click on where it says next. It's going to ask us if we want to set up an email account. We want to click yes to that. It's going to give you the option to set up an email account and ask you for some information here. In this case, we're not going to put that in. We want to go to manual setup instead. The reason for this is although it can pick up the right settings based on the information you type in, a lot of times it'll come back with incorrect information. So you want to click on the manual setup and then go to next. We're going to be setting up a POP or IMAP account. The server through cPanel supports both, so it works either way here. But we do need to select that option. Here we'll get to the setup screen, and this is very similar for just about every version of Outlook that you have out there. So the first thing it's asking for is your name. You can type in anything into this box. There actually is no wrong answer here. We're just going to be typing in .easygram. That way, whenever I send any message to someone, it'll say .easygram is the responder. The email address we're going to be typing in here is the same one we set up earlier, which is info at sampledomain.net. For the account type, you can choose between POP3 or IMAP. The difference between the two is POP3 will download all of the email directly into your program and create a separate email copy to the one that's on the server. You can then either delete the copy on the server or leave it there. If you do choose to leave it there on the server, just be aware of the storage space. You may want to upgrade to a larger plan such as our unlimited plan so that that way you have access to both POP3 on your computer through all the email you backed up, but have sufficient space on the server to make sure you can keep everything backing up without running into problems. 
For IMAP, it actually doesn't download a physical copy of the email, it doesn't create a separate copy, instead it synchronizes up and shows you everything that's actually online with your account. So if you're going on IMAP, it's definitely suggested to make sure you have the space and go to a large plan like the unlimited hosting for it, so that you have all the space to make sure you can synchronize up everything together. For the IMAP accounts, they do synchronize everything between different devices. So if you have like a phone, a tablet, definitely the better account choice to choose to go through with it. You'll see here on the right, it says we can keep it offline for a series of time. This again, because it just synchronizes up. It doesn't keep a physical copy. This is only a temporary copy it's storing. So under the account information, you can actually see on the other screen here, we've got it still stored in there. So you can either just highlight it and copy and paste it right across from there, like we're doing here or you can go ahead and actually type it out. Because the incoming in server and the outgoing server are actually the exact same server address, so you can easily just copy and paste it into both. Or if you type it in once, you can just copy it from there and paste it across. The username here will actually often put in incorrectly because it just uses a default grab off of the email address. It, the username should actually be the full email address itself. So you want to make sure to type that in. Then going to be typing in the password. You want to make sure remember password or check mark that way it's going to remember what you type in so you don't have to keep typing it in every time if you do want to have a more secure login you can uncheck this and just type it in every time you want to make sure they'll require login using secure password authentication or spa you want to make sure this is disabled you don't need it enabled we then want to go to where it says more accounts we're going to go to where it says outgoing server we need to check where it says my outgoing server smtp requires authentication Make sure you select the option for use same settings as my incoming server. We then want to go down to where it says advanced. Under the IMAP server, we need to change the port here. We're going to be updating this to 993, which you can see over here is the port number. We need to make sure the SSL is enabled. For the outgoing port number, we're going to be changing this to 465, as you can see is right here. We're going to be enabling the SSL on here. Now, one thing some email programs will do, some will not, is they'll change it to a default port number after you do the SSL switch. So just do go back and double check and make sure it hasn't changed. If it did change it like you saw in ours here, just change it back, make sure to do so. The last thing you need to make sure and take care of if you are doing an IMAP account is the root folder path. For the root folder path, you can leave this as either blank, you can type in a slash just like that, or you can actually type in the word inbox all in capital letters. Now, which one of these you choose depends on your computer. Generally speaking, you can leave it just a blank space and your computer will put two to two together and know where to put all the everything into. We're going to be typing in inbox in all capital letters just to make sure there's no doubt between the program's mind. It knows where to put everything. We're then going to click on where it says OK. And then depending on your version, you may be able to test the account right away or you may be able to go to next step. Because this is a new installation, it forces us to go to next. It doesn't let us test the account. And then once we do the next, it'll force the test anyway. So here you can see you get green check marks showing there's no errors. Everything worked fine. If you do get an error, make sure to go back through the settings and just tweak them. If you are trying the SSL settings and do get an error, if you make sure that all your settings are correct and you still don't see an issue with it, try and switch it to the unsecure the non-SSL version and just see if that will let you through because as we mentioned at the beginning your actual network provider may not allow it through and that could be the reason why it's failing. So we just want to close this down once we've gone through and confirmed it's gone through. It gives you this thing saying you're all set. We just want to click on where it says finish. Once we do that Outlook is actually setting up everything just because again this is the first installation. But otherwise you can go through and just do everything here. So you can see it's already grabbed in a bunch of everything we've set here. You can see we've created even a test account yesterday when we set up the actual account for it. You can see everything else is coming in. There's a bunch of test accounts from Outlook and other things here. But you can see everything's already in there. Now one last thing that's important to do whenever you set up anything, make sure you go to new email. Send an actual email from yourself to yourself. Make sure you use the same account for both. The reason why is this test, this test both the sending and receiving at the exact same time. It's always good to actually put in something in a message just if you have any kind of secure filter or firewall set up because sometimes it'll reject them if you don't put anything in there. So once we've gone ahead and done that, we're going to go ahead and click on where it says send. It's going to send it across here. 
You can see it's in our send folder here. We can then go into inbox and we can see it just pulled it in, gear us a little notification. So with this, you can see everything is set up and working. Now, because this is an IMAP account, it does show everything here. It does show our inbox. It does show everything in our send. So you can see something we sent from the server yesterday. It does actually have it here as well. If you're setting this up through POP, you're not gonna see things from the server except in the inbox because POP only grabs the information from the inbox itself. So that's another reason why you may want to set up IMAP instead of it because it does synchronize all the folders across. But from this, you can see it's very easy to set up the Outlook program to use email. If you do run into any issues with it, definitely do make sure to contact our support. We'll be more than happy to help you out. You can reach us via phone, live chat, or email, whatever's more convenient for you. If you are planning to set up on IMAP or you do plan to leave a copy of the messages on the server when you're using POP, you do want to probably update your account to a different plan one that's large enough to make sure you can store everything on the server that way you won't run into any issues with space if you're not sure about whether there's going to be any space issues you can always contact us we'll tell you how much space you're using up right now show you how to check this yourself so that you can upgrade it later if you need to if you have any questions or any concerns or want us to do any other different kinds of videos or think there's a video we're missing we should do, definitely let us know. Follow it up in the comments. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can also leave any comments again through our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.